Heather Patton Juan, well, the president's event was focused on two vaccines that could be ready by the end of the year. Mr. Trump did not take questions from reporters, but there was one telling moment where the president seemed to indicate he is aware of the reality that the end is near for his administration. Thank you very much. Thank you. President Trump appearing today in the White House Rose Garden, speaking for the first time since the presidential race was called for Joe Biden. Trump came out to talk about two COVID-19 vaccines, which could be available by the end of the year. Our investment will make it possible for the vaccine to be provided by Pfizer free of charge. The president still would not concede the race, but appeared to catch himself when talking about the possibility of another lockdown. Ideally, we won't go to a lockdown. I will not go. This administration will not be going to a lockdown. Hopefully, the, the uh, whatever happens in the future, who knows which administration will be. I guess time will tell. Trump incorrectly called out Pfizer's CEO for saying his company was not part of Operation Warp Speed, Trump's program to help speed up the creation of a coronavirus vaccine. Pfizer said it wasn't part of Warp Speed, but that turned out to be a unfortunate misrepresentation. But that's not true. Pfizer opted out of taking government funding for research and development of their vaccine, but they did make a large-scale production and delivery deal with key U.S. government agencies. As the press conference ended, Trump left without taking questions. Reporters shouted at him as he walked away. The White House continues to block the official transition to President-elect Joe Biden, which means Biden's team does not have access to government agencies or experts to coordinate its COVID response. Say at this pivotal time, and as we've seen thousands seen this week, thousands of Americans have uh, lost their lives to COVID. Um, the current president is absent from that conversation. And, you know, it's imperative that uh, our team and our experts have that access. And tonight, President Trump's former chief of staff, John Kelly, agrees, telling Politico the transition is about the nation and it hurts our national security to delay it. With Biden now winning Georgia and Arizona today, Trump's lawyers dropped their lawsuit in Arizona, admitting it would not change enough votes to matter. But even with the Trump campaign's legal efforts failing in several states, the president's top aides continue continue to cling to an alternate reality. President Trump believes he will be President Trump, have a second term. Yet the president is showing little interest in actual governing. He's been silent on the explosion of COVID cases, not mentioned the tropical storm that battered Florida and the Southeast, and said nothing about five American service members killed in a helicopter crash in Egypt's Sinai Peninsula yesterday. He has continued tonight to send a flurry of false and misleading tweets, claiming to have won states that he has lost. The White House released a statement saying any suggestion that the president has given up on governing is false. Thank you, Secret Service. They do a great job. And tonight, CBS News has learned that dozens of members of the Secret Service have either contracted coronavirus or are in quarantine. Cases that are linked to campaign rallies President Trump held leading up to the election. Meanwhile, President-elect Biden spent the day at his Delaware beach house, meeting with transition advisors, taking what sources call his notoriously deliberative approach as he considers potential cabinet nominees, even as they wait for President Trump to concede and allow the official transition process to begin. We're not interested in having a food fight with uh, the GSA administrator or anyone, really. And aides say Biden has contenders in mind for all of his cabinet positions. In his first interview, Biden's chief of staff, Ronald Klein, said Biden will issue a national mask mandate immediately after being sworn in and will also appoint a national COVID coordinator. Live in the newsroom, I'm Tom Waite. Juan, back to you. All right, Tom, thanks so much. We have a key election alert tonight as well. Republicans have picked up another.